So guys, before this video starts, I'd just like to say sorry for the audio. I'm not sure what went wrong with it. I only just realized there was kind of like some noise in the background while I was editing the video. I'm not sure why the audio is like this. It's genuinely never happened before. And yeah, I'll make sure I'll have a backup recording the audio completely separately in future so that this doesn't happen again. So really sorry about that. Anyway, now let's get on to the video. What is going on guys, DBG here. In this video, I'm going to be going over all of the cards in the new Flight School set. And I'm going to be telling you guys which of them are worth picking up. And roughly what price I believe that they're actually worth. Because obviously, if for example, I might say that one of these higher rated cards isn't worth picking up. But if he ends up being pack glitched and becomes really cheap, obviously then they're going to be worth picking up. So we're going to start off, um, before we go on to these, with a this day in history, Leandro Barbosa. So Barbosa has got 92 open shot 3, he's a 6'3", uh, 2 guard, 89 ball control, 97 speed, 2 ball acceleration. He's basically, if Barbosa has got a good release, he might be useful. But again, Barbosa, his release in general in 2k has always been one of the worst. But at the same time, Drazen Petrovic apparently got a better release. I haven't actually used that Drazen, so I wouldn't know at the minute. But apparently they uh, gave Drazen Petrovic a better release. But um, now we are going to go on to uh, these Emerald cards. Starting off is with Jamario Moon. So, Jamario Moon has got an 84 open shot 3. He's a 6'8 small forward. 84 open shot 3, 79 open shot mid. Decent speed, speed ball, and acceleration. 97 driving dunk, though. Guessing 100 tendency. Oh, no, only 95 tendency. He's got 74 ball control, which is all right. Rebounding, non-existent. He's got... Decent enough lateral quickness, decent on-ball defensive IQ, and to be fair, Jamario Moon might actually be quite a decent card. If his release is nice, he's got a bit of height for small forward position, he can shoot, he can dunk, he can uh, defend a little bit, he could be quite nice, and he's relatively fast. So as far as cheap cards go, he might be okay. Next, you got Kenny Smith. Kenny Smith has got 91 open shot mid, 91 open shot three. He's got one gold badge, which is posterizer. I assume all these guys have got gold posterizer. He got an 85 driving dunk only, which isn't the best. He's got decent-ish speed, speed ball. So he's decent-ish speed and acceleration, good speed ball 90. However, 83 ball control means he can't speed boost, which is not the best thing for a point guard. And also, he's not going to be a great defender. Uh, not great lateral quickness. He's got 66 steel, which is not the best. And Kenny Smith in general, I don't think he's going to be great. There's definitely going to be better point guards you can use. Unless his release is absolutely money, there's probably going to be better point guards you can use. And there'll be better point guards, but really cheap point guards you can use as well. Now we're on to Isaiah Ryder. Um, he's got 87 on shot mid. Just wait a second. Really? DBG, get this comment in your video. <laughs> oh my god. Basically, how to get your comment in a video. Comment on 2 KMT Central straight away. One of these new cards, set of cards come out. But um, Isaiah Ryder, 87 home shot mid, 91 home shot 3. Guessing goal posterizer. He's got 83 ball control, so with a coach he can speed boost. Actually, to be fair, Kenny Smith can speed boost with a coach, so he might be alright. Uh, 2 speed, 84 speed ball. However, 92 acceleration, which is the most important of all those stats, is good. And to be honest, this card could actually somehow be better than his Ruby card. Like his Ruby, obviously, goes he goes down in shot 3. Open shot mids around the same. He's actually, even though he's got higher speed, his acceleration is, slow, is lower, so he'll actually feel a bit slower. And how many, let's look at total stats. 3368, 3500. So obviously there are better stats um, on the Ruby, but this card could be almost as good and could be a really, really nice budget pickup. Now we are on to the one that I'm most excited for, and it is Tracy McGrady Sapphire card. So Tracy McGrady, 86 open shot mid, 84 open shot three. He's 6'8", he can play at the one as well. He's got 80 free throw, 88 speed, 88 acceleration, 87 speed of ball. He's got 86 ball control, which is good. Actually, he's not, which is good, which is great. He can speed boost. He's got 84 post fadeaway, which is good. 97 driving dunk. He can't play defense at all, but his lateral quickness is up to 80. And that was the biggest problem with his Emerald, was that his lateral quickness was only 65. That going up to 80, as well as him being long and with a high block rating, means he's going to be a great, great defender. And T-Mac is 100% worth using. 100%. 75 tangible, so he's like, he is a hidden ruby. But this card is 100% worth using. I'm going to say for these cards, maybe two, 2k for Jamario Moon, maybe 1500 for Kenny Smith. But 2k for Isaiah Ryder. T Max is probably worth about, he'll be about 7 or 8k, but anything under 15k is worth it. Now we're on to Serge Ibaka. 
Serge Ibaka has got an 85 open shot, 3, 95, sorry, 96 open shot mid, so he could be a great stretch, 4, 95 driving dunk, 95 standing dunk is good, no post game whatsoever, rebounding is okay, he's got not the best speed and acceleration or speed of ball, defensively he's good, good on ball and low post defensive IQ, not the best lateral quickness, but a good enough block of 83, his block should be higher than that, but yeah, as far as stretch fours go, if his release is nice, he could be a really good card, again, Definitely a card that'll be worth trying out, especially if he's cheap, which realistically he will be. Now we're on to Andre Iguodala. So Iggy has got a 78 open shot mid, 79 open shot three, 65 intangible. So realistically, he could be he's either a hidden 89 overall or maybe 90 overall. 86 speed, 84 acceleration, 83 speed of ball. Those stats are really, really nice. He's at 92 on ball defensive IQ. He's at 91 lateral quickness, which is good. 90 steal. He's also got 90 driving dunk which is really good. So he's going to be a lockdown defender. He's gonna be a competent shooter. Not lights out, but he will hit shots when he's open. He can speed boost. He's relatively fast, and he's got an unbelievable dunk. Andre Iguodala, again, could be one of the best Sapphire cards in the game. Like, imagine running T-Mac and Andre Iguodala on the wings together. That would be incredible, and they're both gonna be quite cheap. Now we're on to Tom Chambers. I don't know what his release is like this year, but He's got, like, historically, he's had kind of a bit of a weird release in 2K, but he's got a good enough open shot mid, or sorry, a good open shot mid of 88, good enough open shot three of 80. He's got 51 speed of ball, which is can be a bit of a problem. If it was higher speed of ball, this card would be unbelievable. But he's got 74 speed, 74 acceleration. Defensively, he's quite good. He's got decent enough low post events by Q, however, low enough block. Means he may not be as good as I thought. 55 intangible, so he realistically is probably a hidden diamond. He's got 88 offensive rebound, 90 defensive rebound, insane driving, standing dunk, great post game. And this could be one of the most underrated power forwards in my team right now. Like, if he had higher speed of ball, this card like could get into God Squads. But he's really, really nice. Basically, all he needs is if he has a good release, and his release is uh, really nice, which they've tended to do with players this year, change their release for no reason. And if he basically release dependent, he could be the best Ruby card in the game. Or the best Ruby big man in the game. Now we're on to Daryl Dawkins. So Daryl Dawkins has got 98 driving and standing dunk. Obviously, five gold badges. At velocity finisher, post riser, bruiser, drop step, and putback king. He's just gonna dunk. Good enough speed. He's got good rebounding stats, 82 block. His vertical should be super, super high, 97, yeah. He's just gonna basically jump out of the gym and dunk the ball. Not uh, much of a post game. Okay, post hook, not great post fadeaway. But again, not a bad card at all. Probably um, not the best Ruby, but it's all right, I guess. Now we are on to the Amethyst. We actually have to go through these quite quickly. Um, Amethyst Kenny, uh, Kevin Johnson. He has got you know, he's 6 one, 10 gold badges. He's got 87 open shot mid, 82 open shot three. You can pause if you want to look at any of these badges. We got to go into a bit of a rush. Just realize we're about seven minutes into this video, possibly close to eight. But he's got 93 driving layup, 81 only driving dunk. Great speed, speed of acceleration, great ball control. Steal of 80. This card could be really nice, especially if he's got uh, the release that he had in previous years. Kenny Smith could, or Kevin Johnson could be a really, really nice card. That is the coolest looking card I've ever seen. That flight's cool. If that's what the backgrounds are for all these cards, they could be the coolest looking cards we've ever seen. Now we're on to Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade, 10 gold badges as well. If you want to pause, you can look at them. He's got, well, he's 6'4", 2 guard, but you're probably going to play him at the 1. 85 open shot mid, 80 open shot 3 is good. He's got 94 speed, 94 acceleration, 92 speed of ball, which is crazy. Only a 46 block for what's meant to be prime Dwayne Way. Like, come on, 2K. It's got to be at least the 70. But he's got 95 driving dunk, which is insane. He's speed boosting. He's got he's a lockdown defender and got good driving layup. This is like an unreal Dwayne Way card. So he can burn people off dribble. He's gonna be so fast. He's gonna be dunking on everyone. His jumper is nicer this year. And this card is going to be nice. Like the Ruby was good. This card is just way, way better. Now we're on to Dr. J, who we just skipped. A 6-6 six, six, uh, small forward. He's got a 71 on shot three. It's a little bit not the best, to be honest. He can speed boost, decent speed, speed ball acceleration. 96 driving dunk is good. He's got crazy dunk animations, as we saw from the Ruby. Good defensive card, great lower quickness, great on ball defensive IQ, decent steal, and yeah, like it's going to be quite decent. However, like obviously I just don't think um, I don't like non-shooting cards, 
And Dr. J just doesn't shoot well enough. I know obviously he's got some good gold badges and go catch and shoot, but just leaves a little bit to be desired. Like it's good, it's a good card, but it's just there's guys that in this set that don't equally as well and can't shoot the ball, so he's a little bit um, disappointing compared to them. And now we're on to Michael Jordan, the card that's basically gonna completely crash the market. Michael Jordan has got 90 open shot mid, 75 open shot three, 88 post fadeaway, 89 speed to a bond acceleration. Wow, that's not the best, to be honest. 90 driving dunk only. Wow, that's disappointing. Like, he's a lockdown defender. He's going to be insane because animations, but that is crazy. He's not plus 90 speed, and also his driving dunk is only a 90 as well, which is crazy. Like, MJ, I see Hall of Fame, Posterizer, 14 gold badge. is going to be unreal, but uh, a little bit disappointing, to be honest. Now we've got Dwight Howard. Dwight has got two Hall of Fame badges, Lob City Finisher and Rim Protector. So I think him and Blake have a Lob City Finisher Hall of Fame. 93 speed for a center is nuts. He's got 97 driving dunk, which is really good. 92 on ball defensive IQ. Great lateral quickness, so he's going to be one of the best defenders in the game. He's got unreal rebounding. He's got 53 intangibles, which means he's 100% a hidden pink diamond. And yeah, this card is insane. Like as far as non-shooting centers go, he may be the best of them all. Even though, obviously I do prefer shooting centers. Now we're on to Clyde Drexler. No Hall of Fame badges for Clyde Drexler. Not even Hall of Fame posterizer. He has a 15 gold badges. Clyde Drexler, 95 overall with 97 intangibles. He's got 93 open shot mid, 80 open shot three. He's a 91 speed, 83 speed ball, 87 acceleration. Defensive stats are decent enough. 95 driving dunk is really good. Good post fadeaway, 6'7", so he's longer than Michael Jordan. He's got that extra inch on him. Great driving layup and is going to be a great, great card. Especially if they've given Clyde like the OP release like he's had previous years. And now we're on to Sean Kemp, the reward. Sean Kemp comes with five Hall of Fame badges, pick and roller, his finisher, Lob City finisher, posterizer, and chase down artist. He's got 90 open shot mid, only a 64 open shot three, which is not great. Great speed, speed of bonding acceleration. He's got 98 six driving dunk, 97 standing dunk. Good um, defensive stats as well, good lateral quickness, good rebounding. However, he's just, as the comment said, Blake Griffin's a better card than him, and you don't need to lock in a collection for Blake. So while I think Kemp is all right, definitely gonna be a good card, and probably will lock him in myself just for the content, I wouldn't really advise you guys to lock them in. So anyway, that's the video of cards that are worth picking up. Jamario Moon, definitely. Isaiah Ryder, definitely. Uh, probably the three Sapphires are gonna be worth picking up. You might as well try out Tom Chambers, see how he is. If Kevin Johnson's cheap, he might be all right. Dwayne Wade's gonna be a good card. And as far as the diamonds go, they all look to be okay. I just don't see there being much of a point locking in the collection. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.